I just finished watching the entire season of Love is Blind UK and I think that's a pretty extraordinary achievement for me because I'm not really a reality TV person. I didn't watch the World Cup this year and I didn't even watch the Olympics because I'm so focused on my own mission and like what I want to achieve out of life and I, I get distracted quite easily so I know if I started watching that I would have got sucked in and I would have just kept watching and I need that time to be working on myself. Anyway, the reason why I watched Love is Blind is because I was nearly on the show, or at least I was scouted to go on that show. Hi, for those of you who are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Matty. On the 6th of March at about 11am, I received a DM from a casting agent, a producer for the Netflix hit series Love is Blind, and I will show you the message. I'm Jemima. I don't know if you can see that or not. Anyway, if you're watching this Jemima, hello. I hope you're doing well. And the message said, Hi Matt, I am Jemima, a casting agent producer at CBL Productions and I am currently casting for Netflix hit series Love is Blind UK. Are you brave, open-minded and ready for a committed relationship? Are you ready to find out if love is truly blind? If this is something that you could be potentially interested in, then I would love to have an opportunity to chat with you about the show and see if it's something you could be up for. Speak soon. Thanks, Jemima. So, of course, I did have to check this out initially because it's one of those things where you get a DM on Instagram, you're always a little bit skeptical, but it turns out it did check out and she was legit. So even though I was curious about whether love is truly blind or not, I know myself and I know that I'm quite a visual person and I have to be physically attracted to someone to want to date them. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't date someone that I wasn't physically attracted to. And I think that looks are the first thing to get your foot in the door. And then it's a bunch of other things like personality and like smell is one as well. Like if they if they smell good to you, then it means you're biologically compatible. As weird as that sounds, I know. I have a biology degree, so I talk about this weird stuff. But it, it really is a fascinating concept. Like what comes first, the chicken or the egg? What happens if you get to know someone first, you get to know their personality, does that change the way that you perceive them if they are not specifically your type initially? And I think there's some truth to this because there have been times in the past where I have got to know someone really well and even though they might not have been my traditional type, I ended up liking them. So there is definitely some truth to that. And at the same time, if there's someone who is really attractive but they have an awful personality, that can put you off them. So swings and roundabouts really. And in my case, I know myself well enough to know that I wouldn't jump into marriage with someone who I'd never seen before. Cause I think that is, that's a big step. Dating someone without seeing them is a big step, like a blind date. That's already a big enough step because it's not like a ridiculous commitment, but marriage is something that I take very seriously. The second reason why I decided to not go on the show was because as you guys have probably seen already, there's quite a lot of drama on the show. And there was that guy, Sam, I think he was talking about his nose job. Literally the first thing that he said when he came onto the screen was that he got a 10,000 pound nose job. And I was just like, okay, like why would you start off the conversation like that firstly? And then he brought it up a few times. And by the end of it, I was like, maybe I should be getting a nose job. Um, <laughs> but there was quite a lot of drama. And that love triangle between Kat, Ollie and Freddie, that was a bit of a mad one. And the whole Benaya and Sam drama and with Nicole, and I was just like, wow, it's... What I realised is that for the producers, it's not about whether or not the people on there find love. What it's about is producing entertaining TV. So sometimes the way that the media or that show will portray you could be completely different to how you actually are because they can take snippets and cut things. And if you guys have ever edited a video, you can control the narrative. So. A lot of people are giving that Sam guy hate and maybe he's not genuine and maybe he was, but from the show, they painted him out to be not genuine and insecure and so many red flags and he's getting a lot of hate, but maybe he's actually just a decent guy and we don't know him, but the media and the narrative has been spun in a way that makes him look bad. I'm not really someone who likes a lot of drama. It's probably not a show that's focused on finding love, but rather about making good entertaining TV. The third reason that I chose not to go on Love is Blind is because I was actually dating someone at the time who now is my girlfriend and things are going pretty well, I would say. 
and hopefully she would say as well. And one of the things that I've learned from this period of six, seven months that I've been dating this girl is that things take time. When I first met her, I didn't immediately fancy her. It wasn't like a straight away thing. It was like, oh, she's, she's nice. I'd like to see her again. And it, it really took time seeing her on a weekly basis over a period of a few months to, to get to the point of now where I feel the way I do about her and I care about her very much. And even now, I wouldn't say to her, I want to marry you. I feel like six months is too soon. Like, you need to get to know someone at least for a year, a year and a half. And the way that I always approach dating is dating seriously for marriage. That's the whole point of why I date. And it's probably just the way I've been raised in like a Christian household, but that is the way that I see dating. A lot of people maybe don't see dating that way, but I see it as a way to find your future spouse. That's probably why I'm a little bit skeptical as to whether or not you can fall in love with someone that quickly. Cause it's over a period of a few weeks and Yes, you get to know someone quite deeply through the wall and you don't see them, so you really have to focus on their personality. But then to go from that to going on holiday with them, to living with them, to going to the altar, it's all just too condensed. Whereas if that happened over a period of six months, it's more likely that the relationship or the marriage would work out. I don't know if you guys have seen the statistics for Love is Blind, but a lot of the marriages don't work out. The fourth reason is that even though I would probably get a lot of exposure on my Instagram and my YouTube channel and that would maybe be a positive for some people, I feel like it's quite a, a cheap way to fame. Like it's not, it's not a legit way to becoming famous and there's no hate on people who do get famous that way. All these reality TV stars like Molly May, Zara McDermott, Joey Essex, I have nothing against them. They're probably the nicest people. They're not famous for doing anything kind of special. They're just, famous because they were on a show. And actually this reminds me of a story where I had a friend who matched with this girl on Hinge a while ago. And this this girl was Jessie something, I forget her name. She matched and then she just didn't chat to him at all. Which, to be honest with you, if you're gonna match with someone and not chat to them, like why match with them at all? And he showed me her profile and she looked like the typical girl that goes on Hinge for clout to get followers on her Instagram. Cause she put her Instagram in the flipping bio. So I was like, yeah, you probably shouldn't have send her a like or whatever, because she's not there looking for a relationship, she's looking for fame. And then just out of curiosity, we went over to her Instagram and she had a few thousand followers. And very recently she popped up on my feed again and I saw that she was with Joey Essex and now she's got 400K followers. So that basically showed that she was always in it for the clout, she was always in it to get followers and it was never about, you know, she just wanted to be famous. And I was actually looking at Freddie's Instagram and he went from 2000 followers to about 30k in the first week or so of Love is Blind and then I checked recently and he was on 210k so I'm like wow that's a lot of followers so uh, it's quite likeable. I think he was the most popular guy on the show like out of all, all the other contestants he definitely has the biggest following and I think that's because he's just a genuine authentic person and ultimately that's all you have to be right you have to be relatable genuine and authentic. I don't necessarily want to be famous, but I know for my future career choice as a male model and as someone who wants to set up their own business and be an entrepreneur, I do need to have a reputation and I do need to be known because I could have the best product in the world. And if no one knows who I am, then it's never going to sell, right? But I've decided that if I was going to be famous for something, I would rather be famous for doing something extraordinary, like having my own business and being successful or being a famous runway model and being on some campaign like Dolce & Gabbana, or even being famous for being a, a great YouTuber, a great cinematographer. So I just felt like reality TV was a bit of a, a easier and quicker way to fame, but uh, probably not the right one for me. And that brings us on to the main reason why I decided to not go on Love is Blind. And that is because, for those of you who don't know, I am a signed male model to Wilhelmina in London, and basically I did send them the message and I thought, this is interesting. And I kind of got a, a bit of an ultimatum where my agent was like, you can either be a model or you can be a reality TV star, <laughs> which is like two completely different things. That being said though, Zara McDermott, obviously she was a reality TV star and she ended up signing with Storm. So it did work out for her. She got to end up modeling, but I think that's less so because she's actually a model and more so because she's like an influencer, she's got a big following, people know who she is. So again, swings and roundabouts really. 
That all being said, it's been eight months of going to castings, getting really close, being optioned for big modeling jobs and not getting anything. So maybe I should have just gone on the show, to be honest. It would have been more fun than my day job. Anyway, I hope this video has been insightful to you. I just wanted to chat about some of the reasons why I didn't go on Love is Blind and also just give some of my thoughts on Love is Blind, the show itself, which I found fascinating. And that's probably why it's such a hit because it's a, it's a great show, it's great TV. And out of all the reality TV shows, I think this is, this is the only one that I would ever watch again because it was just very entertaining. I'll catch you guys in the next one.